Welcome back. So we're talking about how to use the singular value decomposition to compute the principal component analysis, which gives you a statistical decomposition of, of data into its directions of principal, uh, of maximum variation and minimum variation. Okay, so you can decompose a data set into kind of these, these principal component directions where you have the, the most variance in the data and then hierarchically, you know, less and less and less variance of the data. Good. And we, we tried it on this simple example where we know the answer. So now we're going to look at this uh, other example that I like a lot. This is the ovarian cancer data set. So this is a built-in uh, data set in MATLAB that you can now load in this uh, comma-separated uh, variable list, the CSV file. Uh, again, you can download it at databook.com, databookuw.com. Uh, this lecture follows section uh, 1.5 of our, our new book, Data Driven Science and Engineering. And so here what we're going to do, this is actually a really, really interesting data set, this ovarian cancer data set. What you have is um, essentially a 216, 216 by 4,000 uh, sized matrix, okay? And what this is, the 216 dimension, these are 216 individual patients. And the 4,000 dimension, these are 4,000 genetic markers that are measured for every single one of those patients. So if I look at the first row, those are 4,000 genetic markers for that patient, uh, that first patient. And what's also interesting is that these patients are broken up into groups so that the first half have ovarian cancer, so um, cancer, and the second half have no cancer. Okay, and so what we're going to be able to do is use uh, kind of factor analysis or principal components analysis, rather the SVD, to decompose this big data, this high dimensional gene data into key factors that will allow us to understand kind of what drives cancer versus not cancer in these 216 patients. Okay, now this is really just kind of a toy example still. It's a little bit closer to the real world, um, but there's you know, a lot of things you have to do to be careful uh, if you were actually gonna use this. So, so this is just kind of an illustration. Okay, now 4,000 variables are far too many for me to visualize and to plot and to understand kind of the relationships of these variables and how they drive these outcomes. And so what the principal component analysis or the SVD are going to allow us to do is essentially learn kind of eigen genetic sequences. So if I SVD this big X matrix, then I would get a 216 by 216 U matrix, a diagonal sigma matrix, and V would have um, 216 by, by 4,000 uh, 4, columns. And each row of V would be essentially an eigen gene sequence. It's kind of the gene sequence that captures most of the variation among these 216 patients. The second one would be the second most variation uh, eigen gene sequence. And what's neat is that Instead of visualizing all 4,000 dimensions of these patients' uh, genetic sequence, what I can do is I can plot just the first few uh, eigen gene sequences for each patient. And so instead of this 4,000 dimensional space, I can project down into a low dimensional space in terms of principal component one, principal component two, and principal component three. And if I'm lucky, then the patients that do and don't have cancer might cluster in this space. And that would give me information about how I could then understand what's different about them, what's the same, how to maybe predict cancer in a new patient, something like that. Okay, so let's run this example. Um, we're going to load the ovarian cancer uh, data set. We also um, are going to learn the groups. So in addition to this big matrix of observations in this OBS matrix, we also have a, a vector of labels that's 216 tall, and it basically says they have cancer or they don't have cancer. So the first half is yes, the second half is no. Okay, and we're gonna take this X matrix, this uh, OB, SV, this, this observation matrix, and we're gonna compute its SVD just like before, and we're gonna plot the cancer and non-cancer patients in those first three principal components. 
Okay, so um, so that's what we're going to do. Before we do that uh, scatter plot, let's just look at the actual singular uh, values of this data set. So these are the the log of the diagonal elements of sigma, and this is the cumulative sum to show how much variance is captured by the first r, r singular vectors. And this is exactly what I want to see when I compute the SVD of a data matrix. Notice that there is this massive uh, energetic group of only a few singular values that capture a huge portion of the energy or variance of the data set. So you have this large portion of structure, and then you have a relatively fast roll-off uh, where there's very little information down here. So capturing, uh, keeping only the first three or five or ten uh, of these singular values and singular vectors, you're going to capture a large portion of the variance between all of these patients' genetic information. And you can see here, even if you only captured the first singular vector, you'd have about 55% of the, of the variance of this data matrix. So that's, that's really promising. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, our observation matrix, this, this X matrix, and we're going to project it into the first three principal components. So basically, I'm going to take these first three um, rows of V transpose, kind of V1, V2, V3. So this is a three by 4,000. And for every patient, I'm just going to take their genetic sequence and take the dot product with these three rows, and I'm going to get three numbers out. And those three numbers are what I'm going to plot in these principal component one, two, and three. And I'm going to plot uh, different symbols for the patients with cancer and without cancer based on their group. And here's what we have uh, in the plot. So you can see that the X's are the patient uh, with cancer. The circles are the patients without cancer. And very nicely, this data actually does kind of separate in these principal component directions. So you get reasonably good separation uh, in these first three principal components. And if I included, let's say, you know, the first five or 10 or 20, I probably would get even better separation of those two categories. But this provides a low dimensional human interpretable way of understanding this very high dimensional genetic information because I'm projecting into this low dimensional kind of eigengenetic space where I can plot uh, how these distributions fall out. Okay, so principal components is super useful for visualizing high dimensional data that has some statistical distribution uh, and using it to understand kind of the structure of that low dimensional, uh, the, the low dimensional structure of that data. Okay, thank you.